Happy Halloween, everyone! Today we are gonna go full on Halloween and dye some Halloween inspired yarn. I have had this colorway in my brain for most of the year and I'm excited to really give it a shot and see what we can achieve. Maybe I will go through and try a few attempts, but I have a vision and I hope that we can reach it. There have been many times when I've gone after a certain colorway and then sort of stepped back and been like, oops, that feels too Halloween. I wasn't going for Halloween. But today, unapologetically, we're going for it uh, and going for all the fun and festivity that comes with this holiday. As Chemnitz, my philosophy for dyeing yarn is to go for it and try. I share things for the first time on camera, sharing my uncertainty, the successes, the failures, and then the happy accidents that we want to try to replicate. And so my biggest piece of advice when it comes to dyeing yarn is to go for it and give it a shot. Because I, through the effort of trying, you learn so much along the way. And through filming these videos, I have learned and grown as an artist so, so much. So along this vein, our lab partner today would like to dedicate this video to her daughter, Sersha. Sersha, your mom wants to encourage you to be brave and to try new things. And the sentiment and message is something that I wholeheartedly endorse. So to Sersha and her mom, thank you so much for being today's lab partners and supporting this video. Uh, I love the dedication and I am so excited to dye some yarn for you. Today we are going to play with Halloween bright and dark colors. And we're gonna dye yarn in this full-size catering steam pan that is across two burners on my stove. For our yarn today, we are gonna use some Knit Picks Swish DK. This yarn is 100% superwash merino, and I am transferring it here into the pan, pre-soaked for about 30 minutes or so. Um, it's pre-soaked, but I didn't wring out any of that extra liquid. We are just adding it straight to our pan. And the reason why I am not removing a lot of liquid at this stage is that I want to add more liquid. I want the colors to be able to spread a bit and so I don't want the lowest immersion. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more water from our pre-soak into the pan. Um, the goal is to have it where we've got yarn at the surface but then there's also plenty of liquid so as I touch down I can try to help move those colors through. Not with my hands but that is our plan. If you would like to learn more about the yarn, my removable nylon zip ties, the pans, I have affiliate links uh, to many sites down in the video description. I am going to add four tablespoons of white vinegar here to the pan. This is a fair amount of acid for this base, but since I want to play with some fluorescent colors, um, I want to have plenty of acid in here. Uh, and now we're going to start heating things up so we can get ready to go. Our first attempt today is going to be bright neon with then some darkness. So I want to play with fluorescent safety orange, radioactive, and purple pop. Unfortunately, I have completely lost my black light, but if I hadn't, then I absolutely would want to try to look at this under a black light and see. Um, but my goal is to try to keep these three colors bright, separate, and then have pops of the black in there. I'm not sure how well this will work because these fluorescent colors spread a lot, but that is our goal. Now, if it doesn't work as well as we thought, I might try this again with an alternate green and purple and go for more of this kind of combination here. So we will see. Uh, the colors that you actually end up with tend to be a bit different from these swatches that we have here from the poster, but we're gonna try this with layering on dry powder. And again, if the technique doesn't work, then we'll shift and we'll try doing this again 
maybe using some kind of hand painted on the countertop technique. But we're gonna go for it and give this a shot. In this whole video, even if what I'm aiming for works at the very beginning, my goal is to talk about my process and the alternatives that I'm thinking of to achieve what it is I want to go for. Um, and I'm really, really excited. Since we are dealing with dry acid dye powders, safety is really important. I will be wearing a respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves whenever I'm dealing with the dye powder. If you would like to learn more about res the respirator mask I use and other ones that other indie dyers recommend, I do have a blog post on my website that is also linked down below. I do have a yarn mop on hand, uh, which is a skein of Nitpick Stroll fingering weight yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and I'm going to wipe any dye off of my gloves onto this yarn, uh, just slightly off camera. The one thing I'm nervous about is the black spreading and sort of overtaking and dampening the neonness from the colors we're using. So let's start with our orange. And actually, I want to reduce, I want to make it a little less steamy so I don't introduce moisture into here. Now, when it comes to fluorescent colors, less is a little bit more. And I am coming in in just various somewhat random patches, but making sure to have a little bit all over coming in with the orange, and we can always come back and add more, but I sprinkled on the dye, and I know I have a tiny bit of time, not a lot of time, but now I'm coming in and working it sort of down and through a little bit with the spoon. Me With the black, I'm probably going to need to move a little bit faster. Um, and I think I may end up wanting more orange dye at some point, but for now, this is what we're doing. And as we go on, we might not want to move things around uh, nearly as much, but the goal was to try to have some, even though it's in random patches, to have some amount of orange all over. The type of colorway I want to go for is non-repeating. Next up we have our radioactive and also just coming in different spots, trying to make sure that we have some of it all over. Now this is a bright neon green um, with a bit of a yellow sort of dent. Uh, I'm a bit nervous that this won't be like as bright or neon as what I really, really want. Um, I'm especially nervous for the purple pop that that pink will spread too much, but the pink from the purple pop when it spreads with the green does end up looking fairly orange. So that's not so bad. I think of my nervousness. I'm not nervous about what this side is going to look like. I am nervous about what it's going to look like once we flip it. Because, so in here, actually, we've got orange going through multiple layers. And same with the green, we've got color going down multiple layers. But, you know, when we flip, that'll be the same. So that's just what I am a bit nervous about. Okay, and with the yarn mop. I'm just trying to make sure to rub all residual color off that I can. Whenever I'm not using a color, the jar is closed. Um, I don't want to risk any spills at all. So here we've got purple pop and a little there, a little up there, maybe a hint over here. All right, this is a purpley pink color. So far, I really like what's happening. 
um, and I have control over the color where it is right here but I'm not going to have as much control beneath the surface and that's where I am nervous trying to do three skeins. Uh, if I was doing one skein, and maybe if I don't like this result, maybe that's something else I should retry. Talking about like thought process and everything, uh, maybe retrying this with just one skein is something worth considering. Because then I would be able to have it a lot more spread out and therefore have a lot more control over where the colors go. But as I add more of these colors, depending on how far these have penetrated, I can then really focus on maybe more black or maybe just little bits of it. But so far, I really, really like the direction we are headed. And this sort of matches my vision. But I hope you can see how this is something that we could do something somewhat similar using um, maybe foam brushes on the countertop. It just would be less random and more regular slash repeating. Okay, this is my favorite black. This is true black and I am running a bit low. And we are gonna be focusing it on the white areas, but also little bits on the bright are fine. So when I go through with my spoon, actually, maybe, do I want to dampen it? I'm focusing on, okay, well maybe, let's come in with the spoon. And I'll come back uh, to the spoon in some of these areas. But I, I'm also considering adding and leaving some of these areas as black speckles. I don't mind there being little bits of white. Um, I am a little worried about what's happening beneath the surface. But, ooh, I am liking this so far. Okay, I'm tapping most of these areas down. Um, and I see some more spots where I want more color. And I am making sure to dry off my gloves in between going back into the color. Moisture in the jars can lead to the colors clumping. Okay, so I'm now going in and just adding a little bit of speckles at some of these color interfaces. And really just moving my fingers a tiny amount. Um, okay, and adding the rest of that powder to our yarn mop. I will come and show you the yarn mop in a moment. But I am in love with this. This right now, if I can keep this going forward, this is exactly what I want. I am going to set a timer for 15 minutes and the main reason for that is that some of these colors like the purple pop just take a long time to absorb and so I want to make sure that I can give the yarn that time that is needed. Let's talk about some alternatives. So we've got these random patches. I could go and hand paint on the countertop random patches in the fluorescent safety orange, in the radioactive, in the purple pop, and then come back to low immersion to add the black. So I can add the black in patches and with speckles. That would be a way to preserve these bright colors if I'm concerned about that moving forward. But we're just going to have to see how things look when I lift and flip. Um, because there's some patches like in here where you can see, where you can see a bit that the orange is less bright because the black has spread a little bit. That is totally fine, but we don't want that to happen all over. Even though if it happens all over, it'll still be very Halloween-y and beautiful. So I'll just have to 
be careful and especially if I'm going to be moving the blacks. The black is pretty well set but if I move it a little bit you can see how we've got white just below that surface. So I'm going to need to be the most careful um, adding black because I don't want it to spread too far but whereas in the orange you know there is a point where we don't see very much color anymore but there is it does go I think a little further um, deeper in the surface and the pink um, goes almost all the way to the bottom so what this is telling me is I want to be very very sparing with the purple pop um, maybe use a little more orange yeah it just it's just giving me that information all right it has been about 15 minutes let's check there's a hint of some pink uh, but you know we are gonna proceed because we don't want to wait forever Ooh, this is so cool all right so we sort of have a little bit of a template here where we want to put some of those colors because you can see some amount of it showing through we are going to place the colors in approximately the same types of spots with the exception of the black but you know we have like an orange area green uh, purple we're going to aim for that and that's what all we can really do so i am going to speed things up and we're going to add color onto this side once again i popped on my respirator mask safety glasses and starting with our orange our fluorescent safety orange we added colors on um, orange then green then purple then black uh, and again we moved it through so it would go down a few layers and honestly cross my fingers because I'm nervous that it could end up uh, well making everything more muted and I really want the brights to show through in between each color I did wipe my fingers on the yarn mop that's slightly off camera and washed and dried the gloves before going into a new color but I was a bundle of nerves bundle of nerves that this beauty that I saw that we started creating would shift in a way that isn't quite what I wanted but we're going for it we're going for it and I, I love where it's going and I just hope that that's where it'll end up Ooh, I'm still really happy with this I hope I didn't use too much purple pop uh, and I hope that we're getting really really good coverage I think at this point um, I want to increase the temperature um, bring us some more bubbling and I'm gonna set a timer for 15 minutes we might wait a little bit longer I think I added a lot more of our purple pop this time I have to hope it's a delicate balance um, having enough water so that way I can spread the colors down a bit but also not having so much water that the colors go down and then spread everywhere so uh, actually let's cover this I don't always cover my yarn um, and I'll pop up in front of the camera to talk about that but let me just briefly show where we are with the yarn mop it's looking very very spooky the colors are blending a bit but it's still super Halloween and I like it I often don't bother covering my yarn because it doesn't really matter to me if I lose liquid but today since these fluorescent colors need a bit more heat and time to set I wanted to cover it to trap that heat in there when you have the burner on the stovetop there are two burners which does lead to some asymmetry in where the heat is located I don't often move things around because it doesn't always make a ton of difference in what I see near where the burners are and the edges but we want these colors to set so that way we can move and see if we need to add color anywhere else I have a feeling that the remaining color I add might be focused on little amounts of black potentially some light hints of the other colors but if I add more color my plan from here on out is to focus on speckling and not moving it around through so if I want a little more green I'm gonna lightly add some green speckles um, because 
it's going to be harder and harder to sort of match what I think is beneath the surface. But I'm crossing my fingers. I really like how things are. And we'll see where we end up. I have not peeked at this. Ooh. There's pink. There's going to be lots of pink. Actually, I'm seeing some black move. Green. Okay, I'm actually seeing stuff move, which means that I want to make it, I want to wait longer, but I think I want to add a little more liquid here. Okay, I'm bringing in two cups of water that has three tablespoons of vinegar in it. And so we're bringing that all around to increase our water volume a bit sometimes and sometimes colors can get a little bit trapped um, and so I am just trying to be cautious and before moving because see if I move that you see the black sort of come out so sometimes if you don't sort of get everything sufficiently wet it can't set this is a reason why we check before moving it I am going to recover and we are gonna wait another I guess 10 minutes 10 minutes are up we are so steamy so so steamy okay and now we are gonna go for it and flip but actually, it is pretty good. It is pretty darn good. So I just opened this up and you can see the inside. We have awesome coverage. That is one perk of our fluorescent colors. This one looks great. Oh, I am so excited. There is some color leaking out um, when I flip not bad awesome okay I think we just need like a super tiny bit this skein right here needs a little bit more but ooh. okay ah, yay yay okay um, I am now gonna add a tiny bit more color okay we are not gonna wiggle it this time so I'm just taking a tiny amount and adding speckles here. I might need to wiggle it. Might need to. But actually, here's what I can do, okay? I'm not moving it a ton. I am just tapping with my fingers on here. And so it's not gonna bring that color super, super deep. But now I do need to go dry off my hand before I get a tiny bit more of the orange. And the reason why we're tapping is because we didn't really have any orange speckles in here and I didn't want to just completely shift that character. I think part of me wants to add a little bit more green and pink, but I'm not going to. Uh, we have just about nailed this like witchy, bright, and dark colorway. So I want to uh, not quit, but I want to stay ahead like we are. And so now I'm coming in and very lightly, again, focusing on some of these palest areas with the speckles. But we're going super light. It's okay that we have a little bit of white. Um, these black speckles aren't all over. I'm again paying attention to the color transitions and areas where I feel like need a little bit more color. And the way I'm doing this is just picking up tiny amounts of dye and letting it slowly fall onto the yarn. Okay, I'm going to call it there. I am going to call it. We are going to add 
a little bit of this black onto our yarn mop, which actually has really, really awesome coverage on its own. But I'm going to cover this up and leave it on low heat for about 20 minutes. The reason why we're going to go so long this time is that this is our last sort of heating round and I want to really make sure that these colors are set. So what I'm gonna do is actually leave the heat on for 20 minutes and then I'm gonna turn off the heat, leave it covered for a bit and let it start cooling this way. So that way that heat will be trapped in even longer to give us the best chance of things setting really well. As for the yarn mop, we got awesome coverage here. In part, not because we went into the dye jars so many times, but because these colors are fluorescent and they just spread really, really well. So like moving it around, we just got really nice coverage. This is gonna be more, the colors are a bit more muddied. They're a bit more muted because they're spread out, but I am gonna go set this. We'll steam set it in a steamer basket for about uh, 30 minutes and then let it cool um, along with this one. I decided I had one more Halloween colorway in me and I wanted to play with these four colors in a different way just really really quick. So I pre-soaked some stroll fingering weight yarn in some water with a splash of vinegar, laid it out on the counter, and with the same four colors I used low immersion earlier, uh, I started speckling a little bit of the powder on. Uh, the goal isn't for sharp, tiny speckles. I still want to get some layered patches of color, but it's just a different version of a related colorway, and I wanted to see how this would turn out. And crossing my fingers that I didn't add too, too much dye. I still had another yarn mop uh, over to the side where I wiped my gloved fingers and then wiped down anything left on my protected surface to leave no dye behind. Once everything was ready, I steam set all of the yarn on the stovetop for about 30 minutes. Let's wash our yarn. Got the first four skeins right here. Gonna pop it in, add some more water. And we're gonna cross our fingers that that purple pop <laughs> is going to behave. But I will say I am really, really excited about these colors. I do think they're not as bright. Ooh, put on camera, they look super bright. I think they're not necessarily as bright as they could be. I think that in all likelihood, we have just some spread of the black or some mixing of the colors, but it is so fun. It is so, so fun. All right, let's add more water and a little bit of some soap it's near the end of the bottle. So really just soapy water, not that, I didn't add that much soap. All right, let's look. That is really, really good. I am happy. I am not seeing bleeding. I'm not seeing a rush of pink, so. I'm now gonna rinse out the soap, put this through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. Let's wash this speckly, speckly bonus skein, which I went a little heavy, I think, for some of the colors. And we got some mixing, but it is also just really, really fun. The purple pop absolutely reads more pink than purple this time. Um, probably because there was no chance for any of that blue to spread. And I'm seeing a hint of some pinkish bleeding. Um, but as we wash, I'm going to add a little bit of dish soap. And we are going to keep washing. There's like a hair of some slightly orange bleeding. So what I'm going to do is add to this some of a piece of water that had a splash of vinegar in it because a lot of times a little bit of vinegar and just sitting for a couple minutes in an acidic dye bath, there you go, is all that is required to help um, sort of suck up whatever was left. 
Okay, and now we will rinse it just because some people don't care for their yarn to smell like vinegar. I don't really mind. The smell does dissipate over time, but uh, a lot of dyers prefer to use citric acid because they don't like the way vinegar smells. I don't know. I personally prefer using vinegar, but that is just me. And you can see we now are having no bleeding. So I'm going to give this one more rinse. Then we will put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Oh, Sersha, this yarn turned out so amazing. The layering of the colors did dampen the neon quality a tiny bit, but the colors still feel bright and spooky, and there's like that element of Halloween in here, and I am so, so, so excited. Sometimes I can overthink colorways, and I might tend to do a trial on one skein instead of going for multiple. And then there's times when I end up creating something I love so much that I regret that I only did it on one skein. So I'm really thrilled I just went for it on three today, which made me a little nervous. But I think this goes into Sersha's mom's message about trying new things and being brave. And that really, really, really holds true when it comes to dyeing yarn. Sometimes if you have an idea, you just have to go for it because you won't know if it works until you try. The one thing that I do wish is that the pink were more purple. Purple pop is a purple color, but those blues strike fast and so we have a lot of spread from the pinks. Now don't get me wrong, there's no question that we have elements of the purple in here, but I think that the only thing I might change would be layering a little bit more blue over some of those pink areas, or maybe picking a different purple, I suppose, one that isn't fluorescent. Oh, I really, really wish I knew whatever happened to my black light. It would be so fun to look at this under a black light. Here is our first yarn mop compared to the colorway. And I think that this is still sort of a bright, spooky, that almost feels like an oxymoron, but a bright, spooky color. There's a lot of the green and smaller amounts of both the pink and orange, which seem to have struck a little faster. It is fun in its own right, and mixing colors and still having them show through when they might completely muddy together is something that is just fun. And I love these random one-of-a-kind skeins that we get playing with some of these techniques. The softness in some of these speckled areas is just so, so beautiful. When we talk about fibers to dye with acid dyes, we talk about the protein-based fibers, the wool, alpaca, silk, but nylon, these reusable nylon zip ties that I use, definitely takes up color as well. And these ones are particularly fun. Eventually they end up being mostly black because they just absorb so much color, but uh, I like these ones so much, I just wanted to point it out. Finally, I wanted to try one more version with these colors. And we use the dry powder on the countertop to create the following colorway. And although we still have the dark and bright in here, and just look at all these speckles and pops of color that we see in here. It is just spectacular. But even though there's still brightness and happy colors in here, the whole thing feels a little bit spookier. Maybe the first round is like dusk on Halloween when all the young kids are out trick-or-treating and then it gets darker and it gets a little bit scarier, maybe a little bit more mischievous, still happy and fun, but you know, for a younger kid, it can be a little, a little more frightening. I think it's so fun. Our final yarn mop is a good example of sort of muddying the colors together a bit and having everything dampened a bit. So compared to the brightness and the separation here, here the colors are a little bit more muted and blended together because we use this not only to wipe our hands while we were doing our speckling, but then we use it to wipe up the counter. And that rubbing process not only mixes the dye that's left on the counter, but mixes some of the colors on the yarn. And so not doing that here lets you see more pops of the, of the different colors. 
So this last one almost feels slightly, oh, I really, really hope you all enjoyed this video. This is a colorway that has been ruminating in my brain for a while. And I think that this also shows that something else that's really been wrapping in my brain and that I want to pick a small subset of colors and then use it in similar but different ways to create related but still ultimately pretty different colorways. Right here looking at all the yarn together, I would say that these four look very, very similar. But if you go back and look at them closer, there actually are some differences as we have discussed. Sergia, thank you for being today's lab partner and supporting this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. And I really hope you and your mom are going to love this fun Halloween yarn. If you, as a viewer, would like to be a lab partner, get yarn dyed in one of my videos and get shout outs, uh, you can learn more through the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. There are two forms of lab partners, one where you support the video before I have started filming for it, and then another more last minute version where you can come in and support a video that has already been filmed but not edited. You can find more details in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, or if you have questions, leave them below. What colors would you play with for a happy, festive Halloween feel? Would you go for something really bright, like the glow sticks that you might carry around at night? Or would you go for something darker and spookier? I'd love to hear the color combinations you would choose. And, and so again, let me know down in the comments section. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I love to play with color and yarn. And there are definitely color combinations and things that I feel very, very comfortable with and that I tend to reach for. And so a goal as we finish up 2020 and head into 2021 is to really push myself out of my color comfort zone and to take a few more risks. Because what I've been finding is sometimes when I take risks, things flop. But sometimes when I take these risks, I end up with something that feels so wonderful. And so it's worth playing and trying and going for it. Please subscribe to the channel, uh, ring the bell by pressing that bell icon, smashing the bell, so your notifications are on and you can be notified of all new videos. There's a lot of fun coming up, especially the Chemnitz Hanukkah special is on the horizon, where each night of Hanukkah will have a new video, in addition to our regularly scheduled Dye Pot Weekly programming. So you definitely don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching.